In this video, we shall see how the describing function of saturation nonlinearity is derived starting from the fundamentals. At the end of this session, you will be able to derive the describing function of saturation nonlinearity. We will start off from the very basic input output characteristics of a saturation nonlinearity as shown in this figure where x axis is the input and y axis is the output. Now, this particular corner has an x value of m, and similarly, this particular corner has a x value of minus m. Remember that the input output characteristics is symmetric with respect to the origin. Now, if the slope of this particular line is k, then this corner has a y value of km and this corner has a y value of minus km. Now the entire input output characteristics in the two dimensional plane can be divided into three parts. One is where you have this slanting line, the other is where you have this straight line here and the third part is where you have this straight line here. In this part where the input varies from minus m to m you have the straight line and for the part on the left side for x less than or equal to minus m you have this straight line which is parallel with respect to the x axis and when x is greater than or equal to m you have a straight line which is parallel to the x axis like this so there are three ranges of x values and we have the corresponding input output relationships like this for x less than or equal to m, that is from this point towards negative infinity, the value of y is minus km and that is written in the table. The second part is where you have x in between minus m and m, which represents a straight line which passes through the origin. So, from our fundamentals, we know that a straight line passing through the origin has the generalized representation y is equal to mx. And here in this case, the slope m is denoted as k. So y is equal to kx in this case. Now, the third part is where you have x greater than or equal to m. So that is from this point towards positive infinity. The value of y is km, and that is given in the third row of this table. In the previous lecture, we had seen that the input to the nonlinear function is a sinusoidal signal and as such you will get an alternating quantity as the output so if an input is given like this then what will be the output for that let's take the region from 0 to alpha alpha is that angle which corresponds to this particular corner in the input output characteristic so from 0 to alpha the value of the sinusoidal signal is less than m and as such the output will be proportional to the input that is y is equal to kx so we will get a sinusoidal portion up till angle omega t is equal to alpha now let's take the next range from alpha to pi minus alpha that is this region in this region the value of small x is greater than m if x goes greater than m then the value of y gets clipped at km so that is evident in the output the third portion is where you have the range between pi minus alpha to pi plus alpha that is from this point to this point here again this region comes at this portion of the input output characteristics where you have the output proportional to the input and as such you will have the output waveform following the shape of a sine wave the next portion is from pi plus alpha to 2 pi minus alpha there you have the amplitude less than minus m and as such it gets clipped at minus km so you get a flat response for pi plus alpha to 2 pi minus alpha angles the last section is where you have the range from 2 pi minus alpha to 2 pi where again it comes 
in this region that is from minus m to zero so it comes again in the linear region and as such the output waveforms take take the shape of a sinusoidal signal so this is how the output signal will look like if a sinusoidal signal is applied to a saturation nonlinearity. Just a recall of the equations that we require in order to derive the describing function. The expressions for y1 and phi1 are given. If you look at the input output characteristics, you will understand that it's an odd function and as such b1 is equal to 0. So the next objective is to determine a1. Since the output is half wave symmetrical, you don't have to integrate over the entire range from 0 to 2 pi. Rather, we'll do it from 0 to pi by arranging the constant here. 0 to pi is now divided into three sections as seen from the positive half cycle of the output waveform. The first part is where you have omega t is equal to 0 to alpha. The second is from alpha to pi minus alpha, and the third is from pi minus alpha to pi. The corresponding mathematical representations are taken from the input output relationship given in the table. On simplification, we will get an expression for A1. The detailed derivation is given in the handout, which is there in the Google Classroom. A further modification can be done by taking the relationship m is equal to x sin alpha such that you get an expression for a1 like this now moving on to the representation of the describing function given by y1 by x angle phi1 we will get an expression like this this can again be modified by bringing in capital m and x into the describing function for that we will be using a triangle we already know that m is equal to x sin alpha so from there we can derive the value of cos alpha and then later on find kn so this is the describing function of saturation nonlinearity we will be using this describing function in order to analyze the stability of a system which has saturation nonlinearity to summarize we started off with the derivation from the input output characteristics of the nonlinearity, and then the output waveform was developed. The output waveform was represented using Fourier series by considering the fact that the linear elements will attenuate the higher order frequencies, and thus we derived the describing function of the saturation nonlinearity. Let's have a small question How will the output waveform? look like if the amplitude of the input sine wave capital x is less than m you have two options a it will be a sinusoidal signal b it will be a non sinusoidal signal so go back to the slide where the input output characteristics as well as the input waveform and the output wave forms were there and try to determine whether the output waveform will be a sinusoidal signal or a non sinusoidal signal pause this video and try to answer this question the table gives the input output relationship that we had previously derived the input x is equal to capital x sin omega t where x is the amplitude of this particular input and if capital x is less than m then the output will follow row number 2 of this particular table and as such you can understand that y is equal to kx so row 1 and row 3 are invalid for the case where you have x less than m and as such the output will be equal to kx sin omega t which shows that the output will be a sinusoidal signal so the system in fact becomes linear if the amplitude of the input sinusoidal signal is less than m. The nonlinearity will have its effect only if the amplitude of the input signal is greater than m. 